good afternoon, Dr. Shortliff. Professor Ted Shortliff is a founding father of the subject of medical informatics, and it's my privilege to ask him a few questions at this Health Impact event in New York. Uh, Ted, thank you for coming. Good to be here. My first question to you, sir, is having been in the field of medical informatics nearly five decades, uh, from the theory and the experimental stages to the current state, how would you summarize what you are observing and what would you still look for and desire in this whole development? Well, for those of us who have uh, believed in the interface between information, computing, and medicine and medical care uh, for a long time. The evolution over these five decades has been really remarkable. Uh, it's not surprising because all things technical have evolved in remarkable ways over the five years, uh, the five decades. The interesting thing really is that the vision isn't that different from what it originally was. It's just that we have whole new ways of thinking about how to solve the problems that were well recognized then. So if you went to a medical meeting in 1970, you'd hear lots of complaints about um, waiting, in inability to access information that's needed in order to make good decisions, uh, uncertainty about new drugs or, uh, or new treatment options that might be being introduced. So that, that's always been an issue. And we've been constantly looking as a research community for ways to try to address those problems using technology. Uh, as the technology has evolved and a market began to develop and regulatory and financial issues began to change, we've seen amazing uh, uh, difference in the extent to which this is now accepted and uh, viewed as an important uh, part of uh, the future of healthcare. So uh, today I would say everybody has heard the word informatics. That wasn't true. In fact, when I started this field, that word didn't yet exist. It kind of dates back to the late 70s and early 80s. And it's been adopted and, and now increasingly accepted, although many people still scratch their heads and want to understand just what this scientific discipline is all about. And uh, one of the main things to emphasize about it is that it has never really been about the actual applications, but about the underlying scientific work that needs to go on in order to allow those applications to be built and implemented and accepted. So, if I were to ask you a more specific question, uh, building on that still, is the impact is now being felt in health. Would you be, would you elaborate a little? Well, all you need to do is look at the, uh, the uh, incentive program that passed in 2009, the, the creation of incentives for people to actually implement vendor supply, electronic health records, EHRs, uh, at the level of private offices, all the way up to large health systems and hospitals. Uh, that would have been inconceivable uh, 20 years ago. So we've passed through a period where, as recently as uh, 2004, uh, President Bush in his State of the Union address said, I want every American to have an electronic health record in 10 years. And when that happened, for those of us that have been working in the area for a long time, uh, our jaws dropped. My gosh, the President of the United States is actually recognizing the importance of this kind of innovation and its potential positive impact. Now, there have been a lot of stumbling blocks along the way, as you well know, and not everybody's happy with the changes. And I often find it useful to say this is just the beginning of a long process. Uh, I compare uh, electronic health records today to commercial aviation in about 1930. Okay. Wow. <laughs> They're, I mean, better than the Wright brothers. Like, better than the Wright brothers, but for far sure. from a 787. Okay, and, and we're going to see uh, tremendous improvements and changes, I think, over over time. But it does require research, and it requires the uh, the vendor community to embrace new ideas and the academic community and the fusion of innovation that can come from academia, I think. So, if I were to have a follow-up question, I'd like to ask you, how do you see the professional growth and the workforce development do you think we've been in symmetry, or is there an asymmetry which leads to misunderstandings, or do you think everything is good? <laughs> Nobody ever says everything is good, but 
Uh, I, I would have to say that uh, we have made tremendous progress in workforce development. There are now many formal training opportunities for people who are interested in, in uh, devoting some or all of their career to working at the interface between clinical medicine or, or basic medical life science and uh, information technology, computer science, uh, informatics. Uh, with those uh, increasing, increasing amount of interest, we haven't seen a commensurate growth in the number of training opportunities. Uh, we're very dependent upon a few academic institutions that have created many of the programs. Uh, we've been lucky uh, that uh, we got the attention of organized medicine and the creation of this clinical informatics subspecialty uh, boards. Uh, the, uh, the availability of that kind of fellowship training and uh, to get actually certified as being an expert in the field would be very helpful. Many people early on who were working in this field really were kind of hobbyists who hadn't really learned it a lot about the conceptual basis of informatics and computing, uh, and increasingly people that get um, responsible positions at the interface between the two, CMIOs, CIOs, etc., have formal training in informatics and computing, as well as a real solid orientation to the clinical world, and in many cases have big clinicians themselves. I, I'm going to ask you one last question, sir. And the last question is, as you are the father of artificial intelligence and medicine, and uh, yes, you wrote the book, sir. <laughs> I'm not letting you off the hook on that one. So the question is, as artificial intelligence gets into the role of the everyday medicine through Internet of Things and the bots we are using more frequently, how about you, how would you explain to the people that there's nothing new? Or is it new? Well, I think the way in which artificial intelligence is being used in healthcare has evolved substantially. And there was a period during which people didn't really call it artificial intelligence, even though there were concepts from AI that were still playing a role, certainly in the research community and increasingly in applied systems as well. But uh, we worked on artificial intelligence in medicine in the early 1970s. So this is not the brand same. new. Uh, and people have uh, recognized the importance of representing knowledge in computer systems, doing semantic analysis without uh, emphasizing numerical analysis for a long time. Uh, in the early days, most of the emphasis was on decision support, clinical decision support, helping clinicians make decisions that are more effectively. Um, and that some of the early work in medical artificial intelligence actually had a bigger impact elsewhere in other communities in society than it did in medicine simply because the medical world is so much more complex and it was way ahead of its time to start thinking about using computers that way in healthcare. It didn't keep some of us from slogging away on the problems that were involved, uh, but it really was uh, in the last decade and maybe even arguably in the last five years that we've really begun to see a change in awareness of artificial intelligence, interest in how it can have an impact in healthcare, and it's all coupled to the large data sets we're producing now, the analytical requirements, the need to apply knowledge to do good inference on large data sets. So data analytics, data science, artificial intelligence are all kind of coming together uh, and I, I'm sure are going to be a growth area in the future. It, it isn't surprising therefore that something like Watson, which may have been introduced as on artificial. Jeopardy on television, uh, is a is a is a is AI components to it, which are now being widely uh, emphasized as potentially applicable in healthcare. So that's a whole business opportunity that IBM has recognized with, with Watson. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. I appreciate your time. And for all the viewers of Health Impact, thanks a lot.